So here we have rhodochrosite, our manganese carbonate. Um, this is one of my favorite carbonates, and it's probably one of the most distinct that we have um, in our group, in our mineral list. Um, one of the first things I think of when I see rhodochrosite is if I have a kind of not so ideal sample is this pink color here. And if we have a really beautiful gemmy sample, it's gonna be this pink ruby gemmy color, um, which is really beautiful and highly collectible. This is one of their mines in Colorado that um, just produce some of the most beautiful samples and they're very expensive and collectible. So here we have some less beautiful samples, but still very useful and diagnostic. One thing I wanna point out with the samples we have here of rhodochrosite is that this pink mineral is what we wanna focus on. This brown tinged, um, you know, matrix here is gonna be our host rock. So we wanna focus on this, which is the actual mineral. So rhodochrosite, pink, dead giveaway. I've never seen it in another color. Don't think it can be another color. That's because we have that manganese in there. Um, let's give it our HCL test. I have tested these samples before and I haven't gotten any reaction. So let's give it a go, but it's a carbonate. So we gotta try it out. This sample is just almost the same. You can see that I'm both powderizing the sample and ruining my nail. So they're really similar um, in hardness. Let's give it a go. And this is probably because instead of having a single crystal form, we have multiple crystals here, um, polycrystalline, and we have this rock matrix, so it's impure. Eh, not much, nothing's happening. So unlike calcite and aragonite, we do not have a vigorous reaction. And you know, there are ways to create a reaction, powderizing it really well, making sure it's pure, heating up the HCL, all of these things will give you um, maybe more reactivity, but that's not what we're doing here. So I'd also like to point out that this, just like a lot of our other carbonates, we look for that rhombohedral cleavage because that's a dead giveaway that we're in the carbonate family. Um, and so here we've got like a nice crystal face. We have one right there as well. These are a nice deeper pink than the rest of the samples that we have. But you can see ever so slightly the hint of that non 90 degree rhombohedral cleavage. And then this, it's just gotten to be a mess on this side here. I have a couple more samples here, tiny samples. Still difficult to see those kind of cleavage planes. Maybe this one will give us a better look. Mm. Still difficult. And I encourage you all to go and Google some quick examples of rhodochrosite because the real beautiful crystals are worth taking a look at. Let's look at this one here too. Give you the full full gambit of the examples that we have here. So like the rest of the carbonates or the majority of them anyways, we have um, a vitreous luster. Sometimes when we have these polycrystalline aggregates, they're not, um, the luster is not as apparent. So it could tend more towards subvitreous or earthy. Um, the cleavage, we've got that really nice rhombohedral cleavage. The streak of this, if we were to streak it, would be white. So not necessarily very diagnostic. The density is moderate, moderately low. The hardness falls somewhere between uh, 3.5, 4, sometimes a little bit harder depending on what kind of crystal form that you have. Um, let's see, color, we covered that. It did not effervesce well. And the crystal form, like we've said, there are some really beautiful samples out there, um, but this kind of massive polycrystalline aggregate is what we're used to seeing. And that is rhodochrosite.